Good evening. A day and a half from now, former special counsel Robert Mueller will go before a pair of House committees and be asked about the Russia investigation. We have breaking news on that tonight. A letter from the Justice Department, which says it was sent at Mueller's request, reminding him not to go beyond the boundaries of his public report. We've also learned through a spokesman that the former special counsel has not shown his old bosses the opening statement he'll give on Wednesday, all of which only serves to add even more drama to the moment. No testimony in recent memory has been so widely anticipated, even though tonight's breaking news notwithstanding, the witness has already made it clear what he will and won't say. Any testimony from this office would not go beyond our report. It contains our findings and analysis and the reasons for the decisions we made. We chose those words carefully and the work speaks for itself. And the report is my testimony. I would not provide information beyond that which is already public in any appearance before Congress. Well, that was the outgoing special counsel a little less than two months ago telling anyone who wants to know his thinking with respect to the investigation to just read the report. At the same time, though, the very fact that he gave that press conference at all, which came as a surprise, signaled something else, as did his earlier letter complaining about how his report was being characterized by the Attorney General William Barr. Both told observers that as little as he liked unnecessary public exposure, he liked people misrepresenting the work of his office even less, which again only adds to Wednesday's drama, the testimony before the House Intelligence and Judiciary Committees, which Democrats say is necessary even if Mr. Mueller does nothing more than cite chapter and verse from his report. Not everyone has read it all, they say, to which cynics have added not even some committee members, which means potentially that millions of viewers will be hearing some or all of this for the very first time, including the bottom line and obstruction of justice from page two of volume two of the special counsel's report. And I'm quoting now, if we had confidence after a thorough investigation of the facts that the president clearly did not commit obstruction of justice, we would so state. And they did not so state. Now, we're on tonight for two hours and we'll be devoting a lot of time to the report itself, to the testimony and the significance of this moment. It is a big deal, clearly, even if the man in the White House who tried and failed today to suggest that it's old news and no big deal, certainly not to him. No, I'm not going to be watching. Probably, maybe I'll see a little bit of it. I'm not going to be wa watching Mueller uh, because uh, you can't take all those bites out of the apple. We had uh, no collusion, no obstruction. We had no nothing. We had uh, a total no collusion finding. It said no collusion. The report was written, and the attorney general, based on the report, was easily able to find there was no obstruction. Uh, there's no nothing. Well, keep it honest, as you saw in that key sentence from the report, that is not the conclusion, nor does the report clear the campaign on the question of collusion. In fact, it lays out many examples of the campaign, the president's son, Don Jr., and the president himself welcoming Russian help or interference, some which has never, I repeat, never been part of any presidential campaign before. In addition, the report says, and I'm quoting again, the investigation established that several individuals affiliated with the Trump campaign lied to the office and to Congress about their interactions with Russian-affiliated individuals and related matters. Those lies materially impaired the investigation of Russian election interference. Now, this, of course, speaks to obstruction and perhaps collusion as well, depending on what was being hidden behind false testimony. So none of what the president said about the report is true, and whether he's actually read it or not, he seems to be leaning on Attorney General Barr's initial characterization of the Mueller report, as well as his decision not to bring indictments against the president. As you know, the attorney general's actions and statements have made his impartiality clear, which doesn't seem to concern the president, who is focused on just one individual. And Robert Mueller, I know he's conflicted. He had a lot, there's a lot of conflicts that he's got, including the fact that his best friend is Comey. But he's got conflicts with me, too. He's got big conflicts with me. As you know, he wanted the job of the FBI director. He didn't get it. And we had a business uh, relationship where I said no. And uh, I would say that he wasn't happy. Then all of a sudden, he gets this position. But you know what? He still ruled, and I respect him for it. He still ruled. No collusion, no obstruction. So again, that second part is untrue, as, by the way, is the first part in order. Let's just take this in order. Uh, for Mueller, his best friend is not James Comey. Robert Mueller did not seek the job of FBI director. There was no business relationship nor a falling out. 
what he's talking about, concerned Mr. Mueller requesting a refund for the unused balance of a membership from one of the president's country clubs. Literally every single assertion of fact from the president there is not true. It's false which may be the single best reason to have the hearings on Wednesday, to hear something about all of this from the man in question instead of only the man under suspicion. Joining us now is a member of the House Judiciary Committee who will be among those asking the questions, Democrat David Cicilline of Rhode Island. Congressman, thanks for, for being with us. First of all, this breaking news tonight, the Department of Justice oh has instructed Mueller to limit his testimony to what he wrote in his report. Does that affect what you and your colleagues hope to achieve on Wednesday? No, uh, look, I think we all understand that Mr. Mueller is uh, likely to limit his testimony to the, the contents of his report and his investigation. I do think it's sort of curious that the president's lawyers thought it was important to remind him of his commitment to do that and make this sort of ridiculous claim that there's executive privilege attaching to everything else. I mean, think about that. The subject of an investigation claiming executive privilege on the contents of that investigation. It's absurd. There's no basis for that. But I don't think uh, Mr. Mueller intended to go beyond the contents of his report in any event. So I'm wondering just personally what your strategy is going to be on, on Wednesday. How do you plan on getting the answers you, uh, you want or at least responses you want from the former special counsel? Well, I think what you'll see from the committee is a very strategic, very sober examination of Mr. Mueller in which we will allow him to really tell the story of what he found, the evidence he uncovered, the conclusions he made about the president, for example, directing his uh, legal counsel, Don McGahn, to fire the special counsel, to fire Mr. Mueller, uh, that he then uh, directed Don McGahn to lie and say that he never told him to do that, and even er directed him to create a false document memorializing that lie for the future. He also uh, will hear testimony from uh, Mr. Mueller about Corey Lewandowski being summoned by the president to the White House and being told to go tell the Attorney General of the United States, Jeff Sessions, to tell the special counsel to limit his investigation to future presidential elections, not the election of 2016. Those are just two examples of clear obstruction of justice by the president of the United States. I think what you'll hear from Mr. Mueller is a recounting of the evidence in the report that supports the claims of serious misconduct by this president. So, and I think it's going to be incredibly important for the American people to hear it from the special counsel himself who prepared this report and led the investigation. So essentially what you're saying is you're with the other Democrats sort of coordinating to try to focus on very specific instances and walking Mueller through it uh, because you believe those instances are the most uh, informative in terms of what you believe what went on. Well, there are 10 specific instances of obstruction of justice allegations against the president. At least five of those, all three elements of that offense are met. So I think you'll see a real emphasis on those five in particular, and then uh, additional questions about the balance. But this is really about the special counsel. Really, for most Americans, for the first time, they will hear the contents of the Mueller report. I mean, most um, the, of the American people haven't read the report. I did in its entirety, but that's my job. It's not the job of the American people. So for, for most people, this will be the first time they will hear what's in that report, what was actually found in this investigation uh, by Mr. Mueller and his team. It's a damning report with, with really disturbing evidence against the president. And I think it's going to have a very powerful impact on the American people. You are limited on time, both in how long uh, you can ask questions for, how long you can speak for, and also just the length of time that Mueller is actually going to be sitting for questions. I I've heard a number of people express concern that, uh, you know, it is uh, oftentimes members of Congress make an opening statement, and sometimes that opening statement goes on for quite some time. Do you expect that to occur given the time constraints overall that you're working under? No, I, I don't think you'll see that. I think you'll see most members go directly to their questions to give Mr. Mueller the opportunity to really speak to the American people and the committee. This is not a hearing which uh, members of Congress should have any interest in highlighting themselves. It's really about giving Mr. Mueller an opportunity uh, to give the American people this important information about what he found. I think you'll see people go quickly to their questions and avoid lots of speeches. I know you'll see that on the Democratic side. We understand from our Republican colleagues that they're going to try the same old, same old, attack the FBI, attack the credibility of Mr. Mueller, be, bring up Peter Strzok, a bunch of red herrings to really distract from what will be a very damning uh, testimony from the special counsel about the conduct of the president. 